I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. I was up really late for New Year's, stayed up till, you know, past midnight with the family. And then I went to sleep around 12.30 and woke up at three because I got an eyelash in my eye in the middle of sleep in a REM. I was awakened by my own body attacking me. I don't know if you've ever had an eyelash in your eye. It's fucking miserable. My body, for some reason, wasn't producing enough tears to extract the eyelash on its own. So it was up to me and my own devices to get rid of it. I was unsuccessful after 45 minutes in the bathroom with the lights on after being in pitch black for a few hours. So my eyes were already like in pain from the brightness, trying to splash water up there. It was just a complete shit show. I eventually forced myself back to sleep with the pain throbbing. And I guess at some point in the night it worked itself out because I woke up with a mild case of pink eye in the left eye, which eventually subsided, but it was not a pretty morning. <clears throat> so I thought, what the hell, this day's already shot. Let's talk about the worst movies of last year, 2021. According to Letterboxd, there was over 26,000 films released in 2021. I mean, they're counting everything from TV shows to a five minute short that some kid did in his basement on a shoestring budget. So I don't know how much, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Regardless, I didn't see everything cinema had to offer in 2021, but I saw enough bad to conjure up a list. And this is an ugly one. Comprised of mild offenders to downright disgusting sequels that ruined everything. I used to love about the franchise. Before I really dive into this, I want to bring up a dishonorable mention. Chaos Walking. A movie that I believe was shot and finished in 1997, and they sat it on a shelf for about 20 years and then decided to release it. It's got Tom Holland, it's got Rey from Star Wars, and it's got problems. I only could watch seven to 10 minutes of this. The weird whispering, the cheap looking film. I mean, I couldn't I couldn't do it. I didn't put it in my top 10 because I just don't have enough to say. I didn't even give it really a chance. I was just so turned off by the initial first impression. I couldn't, I couldn't keep pushing forward. Maybe it turned out to be a cinematic darling. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. So yeah, dishonorable mention, chaos walking so bad. It wasn't even worth putting on the top 10. It wasn't even worth talking about for this much. Side note, have you ever had a mosquito fly into your eye? Oh my god, that is just disgusting and painful. The like little remnants of a wing or a part of the body just sitting in you and you're just splashing wildly to get it out. It's like, oh fuck, oh, oh my god. It's not working. You're keeled over the counter in the bathroom sink just looking at yourself like this is it. This is how I lost my left eye or my right eye. In this situation, I was doing the left. And you're just reliving the moments leading up to it. Maybe you're on a bike and just <laughs> One of the bugs hits you. Maybe you're just outside eating a burger on a nice summer day and one just decides to make its way into the iris of your ball. <laughs> Gotta move past the eye stuff and talk about something equally as disappointing. Eternals. Eternals proves that even with an amazing roster of diversity and celebration of life, you have to have a script that's at least decent. We do have some great talent in this film that are completely wasted by a script that makes no sense at all. The problem with having a shared universe like the MCU is movies are supposed to kind of connect up or make a little bit of sense when played one after the other. Eternals feels like it's a completely different movie in the DCEU more than the MCU. We have a main protagonist that's not even mildly interesting. We have a ragtag group of characters that don't really seem to get along very well or have much chemistry. We have the played out evil Superman trope that we saw coming from a million miles away. And we have a giant titan being birthed out of the center of the earth. The hand starts to reach through before it freezes and stops. But, I mean, there's a, there's a living creature, like, expanding the earth itself. Wouldn't volcanoes be erupting, tsunamis be forming? None of it matters. You, 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 don't, you can't think about anything in this movie for even a minuscule of a second. And I'm sorry, but I haven't given this movie a second thought since just now. Uh, the plot is basically eluding me at this point. I can't remember heads or tails of it. I know that there was some really unique characters, the the villains that the Eternals were tasked with hunting down and destroying, they had kind of a connection with each other, they could evolve, sort of, and 
it was kind of really building up to this epic showdown that never came. Angelina Jolie's character kind of takes him out effortlessly, and I don't know what happened to his buddies. Uh, the other creatures just MIA. MIA in the final showdown. The bottom line, it's a very drab, dull film with characters you can't connect with. Not what I look for in a Marvel movie. The Fast and the Furious 9. Imagine a film property going nine movies and being just as dumb every single time. I understand there's fun to be had. I've enjoyed a few of them myself, especially around the, the almost rebrand, rebirthing of Fast and Furious. I think that was the, the fourth or the fifth one. Who knows, these numbers are so convoluted and stupid. I just find it fascinating that a film franchise about family forgets to mention that Dom had a brother for all of the movies until nine. It just goes to show how little the script or the writers care about the audience. They, they know they're gonna eat up anything, no matter how stupid it is. So sure, he's got a brother. Maybe he's got a granddad who's still alive. It, nothing matters at all. And that's a problem. It's one thing to have larger than life events. I don't get bothered if Dom is surfing down the side of a giant truck as buildings collapse behind him. I've been there, I've seen that, that's okay. As long as I can relate to Dom in some way. But Vin Diesel is nothing more than a statue chiseled out of rock at this point that they kind of cart out and drop off and he says his couple lines and then the, the crew picks him up and wheels him to the next. There's no sympathetic characters anymore. Once the property lost Paul Walker, they pretty much lost the heart and soul of the franchise. And it's not like Walker was a Meryl Streep or a Leonardo DiCaprio. He, he was serviceable for the movies. But their job isn't really to act, it's just to perform the crazy stunts and look cool doing them. Well, when you're an aging Vin Diesel, it doesn't even look cool anymore. When you're just like, huh, huh. It's not exciting. It's, it's just sad. So yeah, is there a lot you can make fun of in these films? Oh, absolutely. People fall off buildings and get caught by cars. Like that somehow breaks their fall more than just landing on the softer dirt. They dodge bullets now like they're agents in the Matrix. They go Hulk mode and beat up seven or eight guys in a small area, throwing them over, punching through concrete walls. It, it's just nonsense. But again, I can forgive nonsense if there's someone to connect with. There's not here. I, I just, and it doesn't look very cool anymore with these characters. They're just not doing it for me. So yeah, Fast 9, I'm done. I'm out. You, you, gotta, you gotta try just a little bit for me. When Venom was announced as a standalone film without Spider-Man, I thought, wow, this is a, a, a bad idea. But I gave it a chance because I got nothing better to do than go to the movies and waste a couple hours more of my one time here on planet Earth. And it was bad. Hey, I know some people love it. My son's one of them. Uh, he's also nine. So I'm going to give him the excuse of age. But I thought to myself, okay, there's something here. We can fix it in the sequel, right? We'll get a bigger budget. We'll get a better villain. We'll get higher stakes. We won't do any of that. We're going to make the exact same movie again. This time with Carnage who doesn't actually produce any carnage in the entire movie. It's called Let There Be Carnage. There's none. He breaks out of a prison and he goes to get married. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to see one of the greatest Spider-Man villains do. Go get hitched. The stakes couldn't have been lower for this sequel. Eddie Brock, still a bizarre character. I don't know what the hell he is. Is he cool? Is he awkward? What is your character here? What are you? Even before the symbiote took over his body, he was already a hot mess. He doesn't even seem like a real person. It's just, he's just like some ideas written down and Tom Hardy's like, uh, yeah, I'll try a little bit from this one, a little bit from that one, and we'll, we'll see what happens. Venom 2 feels like a comic book movie that came out in the 90s, where they're just kind of learning how to do things, they're using bad CG and they just quickly like move the camera around and have the, the, the CG character jump around really fast to mask the fact that the effects aren't good or up to snuff yet. But the thing is, it's 2021. We have state-of-the-art technology that can look really good if you put the effort in. They didn't. So instead, camera moves around fast, you get bloated CG shots without any substance. Some people put this on their best of 2021 and to them I say, you know what? I liked Black Widow, so we're even. If Army of the Dead is on your top 10 of the year, 
I don't think there's an equivalent that I can meet you halfway with. This was a horrible movie. Just horrible. And naturally, upon reviewing, the Zack Snyder stands came out of the woodwork, said I hated the director, don't like any of his movies, have to have some sort of a agenda against him. Who are you people? Why are you so in love with this guy? I have no issues with Zack Snyder. Do I think he's lost his way over the years? Yeah, I do. Did he make some amazing movies, one of which I'd put in a top 50? Yeah, 300, I eat that shit up. Dawn of the Dead, you bet. The difference between these two, he didn't do the scripts. That's where we're running into issues, Snyder. I don't like your storytelling approach. I don't like that when you're doing a straightforward zombie film, you throw in random ones that have robot eyes or weird multiverse commentary that goes nowhere. It also doesn't help that Army of the Dead starts out amazing with a 10 minute introduction showing the fall of Las Vegas and the enclosure of these ravaged zombie beasts. That was the movie! Why didn't you do an hour and a half or two hour heist film like you promised about dudes going into a vault as the zombie events are unfolding? Like they went in before the carnage started. Could you imagine how fun that would have been? It would have been like a from dusk till dawn situation where you have a good 45 minutes zombie free where they're just planning the heist and successfully completing it only to come out of the vault with insanity surrounding them. Everything going to shit, explosions, people getting eaten, zombies running amok. That's the movie. Not this bizarre five to 10 minute epic montage to begin with, followed by an hour and a half of muddy looking visuals, cheap CG, weird king and queen zombies, a protagonist so unlikable, I wanted her to die at every turn. Brain dead character decisions, like in the last act, going to save someone who's probably dead based on a hunch. And then the person you save is killed in the next scene. It was all for nothing. God, what, what is this film? And then in the final moments, they have the audacity to tie it into Dawn of the Dead. How dare you? Dawn of the Dead is a treasure. Don't try to ruin its legacy with whatever filth this is. Army of the Dead is a really bad movie. And if you want to see me bitch about it for like 15, 20 minutes, stick around, subscribe if you haven't. There's actually a lot of these videos have 15 or 20 minute rants on them separately. So you can, you can look around for them, they're there. How do you fuck up Mortal Kombat in 2021? I knew we were in trouble when the best character in the movie is Kano. Kano, props to the actor for delivering, but you have Scorpion in this. Sub-Zero, Sonya, Shang Tsung, Kung Lao, Goro, how do you fuck these guys up so bad? Oh, and let's not forget Cole, everyone's favorite. So, uh, here's the deal. We have a bunch of timeless characters from the video games. There's like 20 of them. I think now's the time to give the audience Cole. You know, he's like a generic, nobody boring dude that audiences can really sympathize with because he's a blank slate. Let's put that to paper. Let's put that pen to paper. While it does have an R rating and some cool fatalities, that's just not enough. It's not enough for me. The movie's long, it's dull. We have a bunch of characters coming in and out of this film without a second thought. And it just focused on all the wrong things. I mean, the first five minutes, I was in. I was all in. You got Sub-Zero and Scorpion having their epic one-on-one -on -one duel, their rivalry that's timeless. And then Scorpion's just gone for the majority of the picture, only to come back in the final moments like, hey, I'm in this again. Remember? Remember the beginning of the film? Yeah. I was in hell. I got out. How? That's not important. Maybe another movie will tell you, but or the animated movie. There's an animated movie, but not here. I almost forgot about Thick Molina. That's the only other thing I was interested in was Thick Molina, and she just doesn't have enough screen time. It's also tough because we do have an original Mortal Kombat that while campy and full of 90s, does have some great characters in it. Liu Kang, Sonya, Johnny Cage, Raiden, Shang Tsung, they're all great in the original. Plus you got a badass Goro with practical effects. Maybe it didn't hold up the best with age, but at least he didn't get taken down like a bitch to Cole. I mean, that's, I don't think, I can't think of a more embarrassing way to die. And I also can't think of a more embarrassing way to reboot a franchise. Although Mortal Kombat Annihilation is a great way to end one. Chloe Grace Moretz stars in Tom and Jerry, the 
cartoon live action hybrid that we've come to love over the years with such classics as Who Framed Roger Rabbit and yeah, that's about it. That's like the only good one. The movie fires up with a terrible rap song and it just gets worse from there. Here's the deal. I'm not what I would consider a Tom and Jerry fan to begin with. I always thought Jerry was a complete piece of shit. Never liked him, thought he was an asshole to Tom. Tom's a cat, you know, he's just trying to get a meal. Uh, sometimes he just wants some friendship, companionship, and Jerry just goes out of his way to be a complete jackass. I just, I can't get over it. I'm trying to remember the plot. After the film was done, I took a screwdriver and yeah, I'm just gonna popped it up my nose, hoping to scramble the part of my brain that contains my memory. Chloe Grace Moretz's character kind of cons her way into working for a hotel, a fancy establishment, where a prominent influencer couple is getting married, I believe. And Jerry lives there. He's staked his claim on one of the upper floors of the hotel. Tom's been brought in. He, he makes a deal with Chloe to get rid of this mouse, exterminate it. And in exchange, I don't know, something, I can't remember. It doesn't matter, the movie's, the movie's complete nonsense. It looks like it was shot in a week and animated in a few months. It's not interesting for kids, it's tone deaf for adults. My wife and kids tried watching it and they bounced. Uh, my son lasted the longest, who watches basically everything. And at the 45 minute mark, just disappeared off the couch. I was alone. A grown man watching Tom and Jerry thinking, there's gotta be more to life than this. There's not. There's not. Everybody get up. It's time to suck now. Space Jam 2, holy shit, this is a bad movie. This is the type of film I imagine being made solely by corporations. Big businessmen getting in a room together hitting golf balls on the floor with a cigar in the mouth and a hot chick as a receptionist thinking, how can we get all our properties into one movie without it being too obvious? And then another guy without missing a beat hits a ball. Who gives a shit if it's obvious. These idiots will eat anything we feed them. And then the fat cat boss does the slow clap turnaround in his chair. You son of a bitch. You really did it. You really said what we've been waiting to hear all these years, but didn't have the cojones to say ourself. Get this man a raise and another car. The car comes with a hot secretary. Do we want to give him a second secretary? You bet your sweet ass we do. What's trending right now on Twitter? What are the Marvel people doing? The multiverse, what the hell's that? Like a, like a new age transgender? No? Oh, it's like universe, different universes. Holy shit. These guys are geniuses. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that, except for it'll all be products. It'll be uh, different characters we own, different properties. We'll have a Matrix universe, because we got that movie coming up. We'll have like uh, Casablanca in there. We'll do Iron Giant. We'll have King Kong. It doesn't matter. What movie are we making again? Space Jam 2? Holy shit, yeah, the Looney Tunes. We're gonna have them drive in a Mad Max world. We'll get like Rick and Morty in there. Someone brought up Marvel a little bit ago. I don't know who that was. Was that me? That was me? What Marvel superhero can we get in this thing? Who do we have? We get uh, Chris Hemsworth? No, he's busy. How about Brie Larson? That tasty little treat. People like her a lot. No, she's, she's busy too, okay. Who do we have? Who do we have that we can work on this? Don Cheadle? Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, okay, he's he's gonna he's gonna be like a game show host. We'll put him inside of a computer. He, he will host all the different movies and properties where he sends these people. It'll be great, we'll, we'll do something with that, yeah. We just need a Marvel character in this. Okay, so act one is LeBron James is a shit father and his kid hates him. Act two is they go inside of the server verse to get all the basketball players back. They broke up. We don't care why, it's just an excuse so they can go to other marketing places that we can push and promote. Things that we haven't talked about in a while, that the little kids might not be familiar with. We can get them on board because LeBron James thinks it's cool, so the kids will think it's cool. It's money, it's cash money penis all day long. Act three, we show all the family favorites. Porky Pig, the Flintstones, not Peppy Le Pew! We don't like him! He's inappropriate for a new generation. He's out of touch. The cast from Clockwork Orange, Pennywise, not Peppy. 
Space Jam 2 sucks. So aside from the disgusting synergy and corporate greed, it's just not a lovable, likable film. There's no chemistry between anyone. LeBron is just robotic in his performance. Michael Jordan looked like he was actually having fun. He had some charisma. There was some, there was some energy behind everything. It felt like a completed beginning, middle, and end storyline. But Space Jam 2 is just insulting to every piece of intelligence one has going through their brain. I don't, I don't get how people can like it. I really don't. I've talked to two people now that brought up Home Sweet Home Alone, which is also Home Alone 6. That's disgusting. And they liked it. They, they said, hey, have you seen the new Home Alone? It was, it was really funny on Disney+. Plus." How do you respond? How do you respond to that? Oftentimes, if I think a movie's mediocre or even bad, I can still just say, yeah, it was, it was, I thought it was all right. I can lie, I don't need to be mean. There's no reason to like argue with them or get insulted if they like something you don't, but I'm, I'm legitimately, I legitimately can't. I can't pretend with Home Sweet Home Alone that it's anything but awful. A total cash grab on name alone with none of the energy, heart, or soul put into it. Sometimes I get comments when I talk about movies like Home Alone 6 and maybe another one that's coming up that say, Adam, you're, you're so hard on this. It wasn't that bad compared to some of the other films that are way worse and you seem to go easier on. The thing is, there are properties out there like Home Alone, like Jurassic Park, like Back to the Future, Jaws, you name it, where the first one or two installments is so great that to make more, when it's done completely for financial purposes and nothing more, that does piss me off on a different level. Like, these are movies that I grew up with loving, or they don't even have to be movies I grew up with when I was a kid. They could have been movies that came out a year or two ago and the sequel was just awful. That pisses me off far more than a brand new property that fails to hit the mark, because at least they tried something. But with Home Alone 6, they tried nothing. The movie is Garbage. The lead character isn't even likable and he's a good actor, but the writing is so bad in this They make the kid out to be a complete douche. He lives with a wealthy family. He's spoiled He gets mad when his mom's talking on the phone and not paying attention to him He insults complete strangers who let him into his home I mean, why am I supposed to like this kid and then he's not even the main protagonist it's the couple that's fallen on hard times and might have to sell their house and they think the little shithead stole a doll so they try to break in and get it back and he beats the living shit out of them! And I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to laugh? I'm supposed to think this is fun? No! Fuck this kid! It doesn't help that the traps, the thing Home Alone's really known for, are miserable experiences. They're not funny, they're not creative, there's CG all over the place which takes you out of it. Like, a dude getting hit with a football in the groin is funny and timeless because a dude got hit with a football in the groin. You can feel that pain. You see the reaction on his face is sincere. Watching a person going, uh, uh, while, while fake CG bottles are hitting her, that's nothing. I don't have, I don't, I don't know how to respond to that. Not to mention the history aspect of it. I know because I've seen tons of documentaries on the first Home Alone, what it took to make that movie and what a financial bet it was. The movie was constantly on the verge of being shut down. It took a month to find the proper house. They would had their offices in an abandoned school where they recreated the house because the rooms were too small in the original and they needed bigger sets to film in. I mean, this is the kind of shit they just don't do anymore. Or at least they certainly didn't for Home Alone 6. So don't tell me to go easy on a movie like this. Fuck you. I'll go hard on a movie like this. It doesn't deserve any sort of appreciation. And for the people that like it, whatever. They're basic. They like basic things. They just want to escape the real world, watch anything. It, they're going to like it no matter what, I'm convinced. But for people like me that eat, sleep, breathe movies, I want something that has value. Something that at least tells me there's craft on display here. What I saw on display on Disney Plus that night was not craft. It was crap. It was crap. Home Alone 1 and 2, lightning in a bottle. You had the perfect cast, you had perfect chemistry. Oh, but Adam, it has one of the brothers in there. Buzz, he's in this. It's, it's a sequel, it's not even a remake. Wow, cool. 
movie was so shitty he went to prison shortly after. He just he couldn't take it either, and I get it. I get it. My number two spot goes to a wide range of awful shit that was displayed all throughout the year. And those are movies that went straight to streaming services. The top shelf movie rentals of 2021. This is a tip of the hat to the Ice Roads of the year or the Kissing Booth 3s. The Jolts, the Afterlifes of the Party, and of course, Thunder Force. Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer star in Thunder Thighs, a movie about two sassy gals who get superpowers and can take on the world or something. I don't know. The movie's so embarrassing. Uh, there's queef jokes. There's Pratt falls because Melissa McCarthy's fat, so she has to fall a lot. It just, the script is atrociously bad. There's just nothing. There's nothing here that's worth even clinging to. I watched this film while I was painting because there was absolutely no way I was just gonna sit and watch this without doing something else. There was a point where I contemplated sticking my face in the bucket of paint, taking a really big whiff and passing out from the fumes, waking up in uh, my own filth, paint all over, uh, near death. And I think that that would have been a better alternative than what I did, which was finish the film. These are just a couple examples though in a long string of absolute fuckery that took place between Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Apple Plus, Paramount Plus, Disney Plus. It never ends. It, it never ends. Peacock. Showtime. There was just too much. There was just too much and most of it was bad. There were some good streaming movies, I'm sure. I don't know, but um, not these. You see, because the name of the game in 2021 wasn't to make quality content, it was just to make content. Because then you can push shit out the door every single day. Because then you can say, look, here's another exclusive. It's not good, but it has a person you know. Rachel Ray's in this and Key and mm, like Chef Ramsey and uh, like Tony Hawk. It doesn't matter. You just have to grab random celebrities from different platforms, throw them in the film. You have the diverse cast. You pull in people from different sectors of entertainment and you're done. You move on. You move on with your day. Hey, remember Amanda Pete? She's in a film. There's a lot of random shit on, on these streaming services. Unfortunately, no one can be told what Matrix Resurrections is. You need to see it for yourself. You can take the blue pill, not watch it, forget it exists, go on with your day and remember fondly the original Matrix and the subsequent sequels. Or you can take the brown shit pill and see how fucking bad this movie can get. I would strongly advise you to not watch The Matrix Resurrections. It's funny because I've been doing this channel for a long time. I've been putting out weekly content. It usually does like mediocre numbers for me. I think at this point I should be doing a lot better. I'm not, whatever. We'll, we'll figure it out at some point maybe. Uh, you know, I averaged a few thousand views a video, 1500. 2000. When I put out my Matrix rant, I had upwards of 170,000 in just a few days. And then I put out the spoiler rant, which was also shot at the same time, mind you, and put out a day or so later. Also, uh, over 100,000 views. This isn't me bragging. This is me, like, amazed. I did not expect those numbers. I expected a couple thousand views, par for the course. It just goes to show how freaking mad people were at this movie and they were looking for someone to be just as outraged genuine outrage not fake you know whatever jumping on a bandwagon i saw some of those comments like oh this is the cool trend to hate everything to be mad and outraged the movie was fine no the movie wasn't fine fuck off i wasn't jumping on a bandwagon i didn't watch a single review going into this i was genuinely excited for the matrix resurrections sure i was hesitant Lana Wachowski ha does not have a good track record. She and her sister haven't made a good movie since Speed Racer, in my opinion. Also, side note, there were a lot of people upset that I called her Lana and referred to them as sisters. Her name is Lana on IMDb. She had it legally changed to that. If anyone's pretending it's you that her name's Larry, it's not what she... she that's not officially her name. You could change your name and I would call you whatever the fuck you wanted. I, I don't care about your politics or your religions or whatever. 
My religion's the films. And one of them I loved was The Matrix. It's like a top five movie of all time for me. The sequels, yeah, they're rough. They're rough for some. I still love them. Uh, even the third one, it's a mess. It's a mess. I, the, the, the second two didn't go where I wanted it. Fine, I've, I've made my peace. I still love the action. I love the excitement, the energy, everything that's gone in Matrix Resurrections. Other people were saying in my reviews, which you can go watch, of course, and subscribe if you haven't, that I, I was, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand Matrix Resurrections, that's why I didn't like it. The film isn't subtle, it's bashing remakes and reboots and sequels years and years later. It point blank tells us, Lana tells us, I don't want to do this, but if I don't, Warner's going on without me, so I might as well burn it to the ground myself. Here's an idea, Lana, how about try to make an entertaining movie? even if you're cynical and judgmental about the thing you have to work on. Otherwise, let them burn it to the ground. They couldn't have done worse than what you did. And maybe you sabotaged it. I also heard that. She purposely sabotaged it. Am I supposed to be cool then? Am I supposed to like it because of that? The movie still sucks regardless of her intent. And if it's being really meta and saying, look, Look at this, we're, we're being cynical. We hate what we have to do. You should hate this movie. Well, bravo. I do hate this movie. Other comments said, Adam, you didn't like it because it didn't have the Kung Fu. That's not what the Matrix was known for. It was known for its philosophical tones and its deeper meanings and questions. No, 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 no. It was known for all of the above. Kung Fu, action was definitely part of the matrix and what it was known for i was living through that generation all the movies that parodied trinity levitating up through the air camera spinning around i remember it in deuce bigelow male gigolo i think it was the first maybe both it was in shrek i i seriously think it was in like a dozen movies in the 90s the bullet dodging <laughs> It was also known for its badass soundtrack. The choreography, the sweet leather outfits. Remember the trench coat mafia that was entirely blamed on the Matrix for one of the first school shootings that they were like, Matrix, that's the problem. It's the Matrix and those rap musics and those video games, that's the problem here. Yeah, there was fantastic symbolism in the movies. There was deeper questions to be asked like, is it better to be woken up and living in a world of absolute shit? Where you're eating multi meal paste every day for the rest of your life, living in underground caves where you have an occasional rave, but for the most part, it's not an ideal situation. Or would you rather take the blue pill, stay ignorant and live a, you know, the life you kind of pretend you're making for yourself, even if you are a sheep? It's a, it's, it's, <laughs> It's an interesting question to ask because had the red pill led to an amazing experience, a utopia where people thrive and live, that's a much easier answer. But the fact that you wake up to an awful situation where you're scraping by and then you're just gonna die at the end anyways, shit, Cypher might've had it figured out. Cypher might've had it right. What the fuck is this new film asking me? Would I rather have the original three movies and not a fourth? That's the only question I was really posed. And to that, I say yes. The Matrix Resurrections as a solo movie, I still don't think is good. It looks ugly. The action's piss poor. The plot moves at a snail's pace with really bizarre acting choices, super weird camera shots, terrible editing where scenes don't flow well. But as a Matrix movie, Oh, it is atrocious. It's insulting to the fans. It's like a clip show for some of the time where we're reliving some of the greatest hits. I was expecting actual Keanu Reeves to come out, sit in a chair and be like, huh, I remember this scene. Uh, it's like the Harry Potter reunion. Carrie Ann Moss and Neo are just out there like, yep, that, that, was, uh, that was Morpheus. That was our Lawrence Fish. Just, just doing it up. Loved him, loved him in the suit. They brought back Agent Smith as basically me just a bro douchebag who's like, hey, Neo, remember us? We had the yin yang thing going on. We're equal to each other. I'm back, baby. I'm in, I'm in a new shell. Mr. Anderson, right? <laughs> right? Except for I'm not even gonna say Mr. Anderson. I'm gonna call you by your first name now because this isn't the same. It doesn't matter. 
when the Merovingian showed up looking like Robin Williams from Jumanji, I was out. That was that was the final straw for me. He's yelling all sorts of curse words in French, randomly bringing up Facebook and so. Oh God, so bad. Neo's just this is Neo's entire catalog of moves. Just, uh, I can I can stop bullets. Whoa, I'm gonna do this for the majority of the picture. And naturally, Trinity also is the one because they both have to be now and she saves him from falling and they play some shitty cover band of rage at the end. Uh, why? Why? After all these years, go back to where it all started. Back to the Matrix. I feel like they asked that question in the movie too. Hmm. Weird. Well, those are my top 10 worst movies of 2021. It's 2022 now. Maybe things will be better. Maybe that eyelash that woke me up at 3 in the morning was my red pill, saying, Wake up, Adam! There's better things out there to do. You don't have to watch shitty movies all the time and rant about them for a pathetic amount of views. See the world. Learn an instrument. Fly a kite once in a while. Take in the sunshine. Breathe the fresh air. Appreciate life. But I inevitably went back to sleep, and it had to work itself out on its own. So here we are, 2022. Another year, baby! of reboots, sequels, sidequels, rehashes, rebirths, whatever with re in front of it. And I'm with you, friend. Not blue-pilled, not red-pilled, somewhere in the middle. Hoping movies get better, and I can relive the glory days of biking to the theater, being wowed over and over again, staying up late, watching films with my dad, going to Saving Private Ryan on a Thursday night and falling asleep in my first two classes, waiting in line for eight hours to watch Star Wars Episode One, waiting in line for a couple hours to watch The Force Awakens, seeing Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man on the big screen for the first time and being amazed by how far technology's come. We have so much to look forward to in cinema, so I'm not out of the game yet. There's still plenty of more movies to love, and with that, come plenty of movies to hate. But I'm optimistic for 2022, and I hope you are as well. These were my worst movies. Let's hear yours in the comments below. Like the video if you had a good time. Dislike if you want. No one's gonna know. Except for me, I can still see the analytics in the back, so you'll hurt me a little, but not much. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Well, that was a long video. Strained my voice a lot too, but I had things to say, and I'm sure you do as well. So please think about subscribing to the channel once more. Stick around, comment, share the channel around. It would really mean a lot to me. And I really wanna make this thing grow in 2022. Let's get to 100,000 subscribers. It's, let's go nuts with it.